CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Today's game between the Tulsa Hurricanes and the Bradley Braves, live from the Civic Center Arena in Peoria, Illinois, is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA One, and USA One is taking charge. And by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. Cold and wintry outside. They do in Peoria Civic Center Arena, but inside things are really heating up. Capacity crowd of 10,400 on hand to watch the Tulsa Golden Hurricane take on the Bradley Braves in a Missouri Valley Conference game. Tulsa coming into this contest just over 500, but holding two very impressive victories over nationally ranked teams, Oklahoma and North Carolina. Bradley, on the other hand, like Tulsa, a rebuilding club, but they have been dynamite at home here in Peoria. Their problems have been in the road. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber, and they are raising the roof here in Peoria for this great rivalry. Last year, the Missouri Valley Conference Championship got down to the final game. It was here in Peoria. It went to overtime. Bradley won it by a score of 82 to 79. Tulsa won the tournament later on. They went to the NCAA. Bradley, of course, was disappointed at not getting a bid, and they took out their frustration by going on to win the NIT. With me is Steve Brody once again. This is a very significant game. These are not the same two ball clubs as last year, but they're kind of at a crossing point. Well, they really are. By their own admission, neither team playing well. In fact, Tulsa hasn't played for 10 days. There's a big mismatch at the guard position. That's what we'll watch closely today. Uh, Bradley, much more experienced, much more quicker. Tulsa is suffering from a lack of floor leadership with their uh, point guard going down to injury Mike Smith. Well, they're hurting. They really are, particularly in the middle. Well, Bruce Vanley, on top of everything else, Bruce Vanley re-injured an ankle, is not here today. He's their third leading scorer, leading rebounder. We'll be interested to watch Vince Williams fill in for him in the middle. Well, you take away Bruce Vanley, you've taken away something. He's averaged 13 points a game and leaves him in rebounding with six boards a game. Back with the opening tip-off in just a moment. Self in good hands. These are the last two NIT champions coming into this game. The officials in the ball game today, all of them Missouri Valley Conference veterans, Ron Spittler, Bobby Dibler, and John Dabro. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups and some changes there occasioned by the injuries on Tulsa's side, Steve. Well, they really are. Let's, uh, the, the real keys, Harris and Ross, they're two leading scorers. The Bradley defenders will really pick up on Ross and Harris all over the floor and concentrate on those two people. Tulsa has not proven that they can score from the other three positions on the floor. Now, the Missouri Valley rules. They have a three-point line here. It is 19 feet, 9 inches from the center of the basket. That is the dark line on the inside. The one on the right, the white line, is an NBA three-point line, which is 23 feet away. So the dark line is the one we'll be looking at as far as the three-point line is concerned. No shot clock in the Missouri Valley Conference. The other thing I'll be interested to watch for is Voicey Winters for, on the Bradley offense. Coming off probably his best game of the year in which he scored 26 points against Wichita State. A game where he fouled out, I believe, with eight minutes to play. They played only once last year, and that was the game for the title, and Bradley won it. And Bradley with a big lead in the series down through the years. The Braves will be in white. Tulsa will be in the dark jerseys, and we're just about ready to tip this one off. This is Bradley's first year in the new Peoria Civic Center Arena. They played in Robertson Fieldhouse where they won 400 out of 500 games, quite a percentage. Tulsa controlling the opening tip. Steve Harris is a great shooter. To Williams, back outside to Harris. They're going to have to have a big game from Harris, who's a great standstill shooter. You have to keep a hand in his face. Here's Harris on the drive, puts it up off the window. First two points of the game. So Tulsa eager to avenge it's lost by Bradley last year. Both teams rebuilding, although Nolan Richardson said he's not really rebuilding. He is reloading at Tulsa. He says he's got a lot of talent, a lot of potential, and it's got to come together. He substitutes quite a bit, too, you will see. Bradley's first shot of the game from Barney Mines deep in the corner. Dick Versace, the head coach of the Bradley Braves, in his fifth year. Well, we expect a high-scoring ball game. Valley uh, basketball known for their up-and-down racehorse style. We expect a lot of points to be scored today. Ty Nielsen, who is just a sometime starter, forced into action because of the injuries. Mike Smith is their normal starting guard. He's a junior college transfer. He's been out with a broken foot. 
Pass going inside, and the shot is missed by Ballard. And Tulsa comes down with it. Watch Willie Scott, quickest man in the Missouri Valley Conference. Mines carries another one from the corner. There you saw Scott at his best. He's best in an open court, ability to penetrate, hit the open man. Mines is a very, very good perimeter shooter. Scott is 5'10", and that is stretching it a little bit. Tulsa having trouble as Ricky Ross misses that shot. Scott down quickly. Hangs on the rim, won't go. Webster had the rebound in his hands, and it was last touched by Tulsa. Remember that Bradley on the season has been out-rebounded in every single game. The last two times down the floor, they've held Tulsa to one shot. The most important thing in getting a running game going is limiting the team to one shot, getting that defensive board. Nolan Richardson, of course, a moment ago in front of the Tulsa bench. Both of these coaches came out of very successful junior college programs. And Nolan in his third year has won the NIT the first year. Mines missing his first shot of the day. And Ricky Ross soaring high for the rebound. Ross probably better up front, but he's had to play a lot of guard because of the injuries. Nielsen fouled by Scott. Now, Nilsson, of course, is the only player that has been here for four years, his freshman year prior to Nolan Richardson coming. He, he has played such a key role in this ball game. He takes the pressure of handling the ball off of Ross's hands. That's 10 straight times Bradley has beaten Tulsa here in Peoria. So that's something else that the Hurricane would like to change. Nice feed underneath. Hook shot doesn't go by Harris. Rebounded by the Braves. Pass thrown away, and Tulsa will bring it back down the other way. Richardson exhorting uh, his team, coached at Western Texas College. Of course, he took all those youngsters and brought them to Tulsa. And all he did was win the NIT championship. And a lot of folks in the valley as Nielsen drives in for the layup. Can't get it. A lot of those folks wonder if uh, what, what's going to happen now to Nolan Richardson, now that those guys have graduated who took him to the NIT title and into the NCAA last year. Frank, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to be out on the road recruiting. They didn't. None of the coaching staff was here for the pregame uh, warm-up drills. They just got in prior to the game. Winners missing, knocked out of bounds by Tulsa. It belongs to the Bradley Braves. Barney Mines to inbound it. Webster touched it last, and Tulsa will bring it down. With such an intense rivalry, Frank, I've been surprised that Bradley leads this series by such a wide margin. You would think that these games would be closely contested and, and pretty evenly matched. Good job by Steve Ballard from Muskogee, Oklahoma, getting his first hoop of the game. That ties things at four. Willie Scott. Scott is not a scorer. He leads the Valley Conference in assists and in steals. Pull-up jumper. Doesn't go. Tipped up and in by Ricky Ross. Steve Harris missing on the shot. And Ross on the follow. You watch Scott and Mines in operation. That's two of the better guards in the country. Good penetration by Scott. Setting up Winters for the open shot. Well, that's Winters at his best spot. He's a wing to his corner shooter. He's, a, he's kind of a streak shooter. Once he gets it going, and he really got it going against Wichita State, uh, he can kill you. He can break the zone. Tulsa played very well on the losing cause to Wichita State night before last, 72-65, taken away by Bradley. Boise Winters hit 16 of Tulsa's first 20 points that night and wound up with a total of 26 on the game. Winters again. Winters is from Chicago. A sophomore, and two years ago, was the leading prep scorer in the nation, averaging 40 points a game. Stay down, Barney. Now, when he, came into, when he came to school here, Frank, everybody knew he could put the ball in the basket. He had some problems getting into the lineup last year because he wouldn't play the defense. Dick Versace demands you play in his lineup. Ricky Ross getting inside and getting his second hoop. Ross, a 6'7 junior who has been all over the United States. This is his fifth college, and he's only a junior. Dick Versace up off the bench. I don't think he can be pleased with Bradley's defense uh, inside close to the basket. For the most part, Tulsa's got pretty decent shots uh, at the hoop. Scott setting it up. Among other things, uh, Scott models clothes in the Peoria area in his spare time. There's Scott, just inside the three-point line. Versace told us yesterday that three-point line is a rule for him to shoot inside of that, not outside. He doesn't like the three-point rule 
that much. They turn it over as Ricky Ross walked with the basketball. Timeout with the score knotted at 8, 15-01 left to play in the first half. We are USA 1 and proving it in Chevy Cavalier with more power from a new high compression 2 liter engine with electronic fuel injection. Cavalier has it. Accord doesn't. Corolla doesn't. Citra doesn't. Cavalier has new lower prices for 83 plus a full line of models including one the leading imports don't even offer. Chevy Cavalier from America's sales leader. USA 1 is taking charge. After a night below freezing, After three hours with the lights on. After all these years, people still have more confidence in Sears Die Hard than any other battery you can buy. All over America. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, when we install a Die Hard, we install confidence. Day and night. Sears. Baseball star Jim Palmer. I hate dandruff. Cantegrin controlled Jim Palmer's dandruff for three days without shampooing. Three days. Tegrin test, day one. Beautiful, so far. Day two. Tegrin's still working. Good thing it's almost airtime. Day three. Tegrin controlled my dandruff three days. Jim Palmer, looking good. Try Tegrin. It passed the three-day test. Tegrin works day after day after day. Last week, Chevrolet player of the game, Rodney McRae of Louisville, for his 16-point, 11-rebound afternoon against DePaul. Rodney McRae of Louisville. And near the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA basketball game, Steve Grody and I will be selecting our Chevrolet player of the game. And in case we disagree, our producer, Rick Lasavita, who is celebrating his birthday today, as a matter of fact, will cast the deciding vote. There's Nolan Richardson. Now, his club, Steve, hasn't played in nine days. Have you detected any signs of rustiness? Well, I think the most important part of the game is the first five minutes for them. They needed to come out and play well and stay in the ball game. You know, they closed practice for those nine days. They got themselves back in the condition. They developed some confidence. I thought it was important for them to come out and experience some success the first five minutes of the game in their head. Anthony Webster missing the eight-foot jumper and Tulsa rebounds. Tulsa with a height advantage here, yet they are not known as a strong rebounding club. Ricky Roth trying to penetrate to Steve Harris. Harris from Blue Springs, Missouri, the NBC Newcomer of the Year last year. Nielsen walked. Well, I think you're, you're seeing right there, no defensive pressure. And this has been one of Tulsa's problems. They've turned the ball over, not in pressure situations, but so often they've just given the ball away uh, from the backcourt position. There you see a, a needless turnover right there. Willie Scott, who last year... One of the most uh, outstanding players in the NIT tournament. I mean, Bradley just decimated everybody in that tournament. Mines from the corner. He's found his spot. That's three for him from out there. You would think if they're a player would make two in a row from the same spot, you've got to get up and pressure him. Uh, make him put it on the floor and, and shoot it. They've let him stand still and put three in. They go for the lob pass underneath, and it works for an easy hoop for Steve Ballard. 6'8", senior. So we're tied again at 10. That is the fifth time that we have been tied so far early in the game. Anthony Webster, a six-footer by the 6'8 center. Dick Versace told me that he had a, a feeling that his team was about ready to start playing well. I thought the best indication of that was in the Wichita State game. They had so many chances to let the game get out of hand. He got big baskets throughout that second half from four different players, an indication that everybody's ready to play. Harris trying to get loose. Staying on him pretty close. Ricky Ross missing. Mines fighting for the rebound. Pulls it off the board for Bradley, and he's fouled by Harris. Last year, Bradley tore through the NIT, winning five games by an average margin of 13 points. It's pretty impressive. Let's take a look at this shot. Now, you know, I, you don't get a chance to see it right there, but these rims bounce more than I, any rims I have ever seen. So the rebound, the timing on the rebound is going to be so important to time your jump and get the ball when it's coming off the hoop. Perfect. Boise winners with his third basket. 
gives Bradley a four-point advantage. Now, what will that do as far as the shots are concerned, the loose rims? I'll tell you, it makes it harder to, to make the shot. Here's Willie Scott, breakaway layup. Frank, the shot that would generally hit the front of the rim and bounce in is now going it, to it, be so live off the rim, you've got to shoot the ball dead center. Three unanswered hoops by the Bradley Braves have given them a six-point advantage, their biggest lead of the game at 16 to 10. Harris goes up for the shot and is fouled by Mines. Take a look at the steal a moment ago. Talk about quickness here. Watch this. Well, this guy. was Nolan Richardson's biggest concern coming in. Watch the quick hands of, of Scott right there. Now, that's experience. He knows when to get in there. He, he flicks the ball away, takes it the length of the floor. That's going to be the key to the game, I believe. The backcourt play can they handle the defensive pressure and quickness of the Bradley guards. Herbert Johnson, a 6'10 youngster from Midland, Texas, has checked into Telsa's lineup. He plays a forward position. Started last week uh, against Wichita in the game we saw. They had a tough time against Wichita in Wichita, but everybody has been. I was going to say, most people <laughs> will. Boy, and Xavier McDaniel, and they've really got one of the great newcomers in the league. Ricky Ross, have an off-balance shot there, and Bradley comes down with it. Willie Scott leading that break. Oh, that's a great fine shot by Barney Mines. Telsa trying to come right back with a fast break of their own, and again the quickness of Scott, but it belonged to Telsa. That's the biggest lead so far now at 18 to 10. So this capacity crowd, and they sell it out here season ticket-wise on its feet. Cheering the Bradley Braves, who are off on a great run. Four unanswered baskets, and they lead it 18 to 10. We are USA One, taking charge with celebrity. No import sedan at any price can match this Chevrolet for the room it gives you with the mileage it gives you. And Chevrolet now brings it to you at new lower prices. The five-passenger front-wheel drive celebrity with standard engine electronic fuel injection. Chevrolet's new generation sedan. USA One is taking charge. Okay, guys, I was a little off. We're not on Route 35. We're on Jackrabbit Road. Jackrabbit Road? Uh, yeah, we're not in uh, Pennsylvania. We're in West Virginia. West Virginia. They got some great looking steaks inside and Mowen Brow on tap. Let's go. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be Mowen Brow. Boy, he really lucked out this time. Yeah, I knew we were Brow. I do a lot of weekend driving and pretty heavy traffic, and everything's riding on my good years. These racing tires give me the kind of handling I need. And during the week... And during the week, I count on Goodyear Street Radio. Because on the track or off, I feel better with the blimp behind me. Get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. You don't have to be a hotshot driver to have a big following. Saturday on a CBS World premiere. Why are County General's patients the target of a mysterious arsonist? It's a deadly race against time. Uncommon Valor, Saturday. One of the key factors so far in this Bradley surge, uh, Willie Scott, he's made a big difference. Well, he, and he's playing the type of game we thought he would play. They take a look at the field goal percentage, primarily because of Willie Scott. They've gotten good transition baskets, easy layups. You know, he's, he was last year's assist leader in the Valley. He's this year's assist leader in the Valley. So often the guys who don't score the point are, are such a big part of the ball game. Uh, here you have Willie Scott. They'll sound the offense, and they need a basket here to get back into this thing. Ty Nielsen. Working outside the Prince Williams, Herb Johnson. And coming off a timeout, you would expect in a situation like this where you're being outplayed to go to your big guns. I would expect to see uh, Harris uh, or Ross get a shot here. Harris trying to get loose for the shot. Double team, and that's Scott again. Watch him go. What a foul. the pass to Mines. Traveling. Got traveling in the backcourt. Right. Oh, he's excited, isn't he? I'm telling what? you. You know, he reminds me of the little guy from Boston Michael College. Adams, Michael I was just going to say. Remember last year against uh, the, there are against certain, Houston yeah. and then against uh, DePaul, the between-the-legs dribble and the whole thing? There are certain players the crowd really reacts to. Scott is definitely that type of player. Herb Johnson going up for the shot and drawing the foul. It's on Scott. But you see, he's around the action all the time. He's always in a position where he can make a play. 
He's in there helping out on defense. However, they did whistling for the foul. Johnson on the free throw line. Hasn't scored so far. In fact, they've gone a while without scoring. They have gone a while. 11 minutes and 29 seconds left to play in the first half. And Bradley is going to the bench for the first time. Eddie Matthews, number 10, comes into the game replacing Scott. I guess at the speed at which he operates, he just has to slow down every once in a while, give him a little blow on the sidelines. Yeah, we talk about the injuries to Tulsa. Bradley's had some problems with chicken pox, one of their top players. But Booker Johnson's been down with chicken pox. But they said, someone said this week his play was rather spotty anyway. <laughs> Please, 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 please. So Johnson gets two free throws. <laughs> well, I think the big story, too, with the Bradley injury situation, you know, they've lost two possible starting centers, Terry Cook and Pierre Cooper. Now, they'd have been a, a, a very much a contender in the Valley and still may be without them. Mines is triple team. Boy, they had Webster open too much pass in that time. Bradley with at least one pass too many. Booker Johnson, who we just talked about, came back into the game, number 44. So Johnson uh, is playing after his siege with the chicken box. He got clearance from the doctor yesterday. You can see Tulsa right now, they just look a little hesitant. So you go to your big gun, Steve Harris. And Harris collects his second basket of the day, 6'5", sophomore, who is one of the best free throw shooters in the country, by the way. He's at 25 and 26. A little pressure here by Tulsa. Well, and kind of interesting that as soon as Scott went out of the ball game, they put the defensive pressure on. They're calling the foul on Ricky Ross. On 24, Ricky Ross is first. Coming up tomorrow on CBS, the Memphis State Tigers. And that, of course, means Keith Lee, truly one of the outstanding college basketball players in the nation against the North Carolina State Wolfpack, two of the top-rated teams in the country. You'll see it tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time right here on CBS. Our score, 18-14. As Tulsa's come back with four points, Eight has been the biggest lead so far by Bradley. Those of you who aren't used to seeing Tulsa play, last year the defensive pressure, full court pressure was really their trademark. Now this year, because they've lost four stars, they've been forced to go into a zone defense. Foul called on Herb Johnson. Good hustle under the boards by Booker Johnson. Herb well, Johnson is, picks up his first foul. Johnson commits his first foul. Three. Take a look. Anytime you can penetrate the zone right down the middle, it just opens up all types of possibilities. You know, they almost lose the ball. This is Booker Johnson, the fellow who's been out with chicken pox. I, th I think he's really just kind of pumped up. They didn't expect him to play. They got the word late yesterday afternoon after practice that he would be available. I think he's a little pumped up. Uh, missed certainly a, a layup he would normally make. Misses them both, but Mines is there for the rebound, and Barney Mines gets another one. Tulsa players claiming it was offensive goaltending, that the ball was on the cylinder, but not getting a call from the official. Well, I think there should have been a call. He did go up and touch the rim, didn't touch the ball and affect the shot, but he did touch the rim when the ball was on the cylinder. Harris going into the post. The Nielsen. Ross, short with the shot. Bradley comes down with the rebound. Boise winners. They've been on Boise a little bit because his play has been a little streaky, a little erratic. And Dick Versace said he sat him down for one game just to get his attention. And he really got it apparently because he came back with that 26-point game against Wichita State night before last. Hook shot missed by Webster. And Nielsen comes down with the rebound. Nielsen and Harris working in the backcourt now for Nolan Richardson's team. Herb Johnson with the jumper from 15. It's good. And he is fouled. Boy, you know, Bradley, I felt really had a chance there over the la here over the last couple minutes to really put the pressure on Tulsa with a couple baskets. However, Tulsa's hung right in there. This is a big basket right here. This is how young the Tulsa Hurricane are. Three freshmen, three sophomores, four juniors, and Richardson has just three seniors on his ball club. Of course, the he lost class, but do most of the play. Of course, he lost four stars from last year, five of his top six players. Now, how about the losses by Bradley? They got two guys who are playing in the NBA right now, Mitchell Anderson and uh, Third Gill. And of course, uh, Reese is gone, their starting center. Let's talk a little bit about the two centers that they thought were going to play this year. Pierre Cooper, they lost to blood clots, and Kerry Cook, another possible starting center, signed a professional baseball contract. So both teams have juggled their lineups all season long. 
Matthews driving into the paint. Webster deep in the corner. A little over nine minutes left to play in the first half. And the Braves going to slow it down a little bit. Matthews, who is a senior, had a lot of experience, hasn't started that much, but he's played a lot in some personal situations. Running the attack. Winters misses the shot. Tulsa with the basketball, trying to get a streak going offensively. They're high and tough. Being down by eight, they got to cut to three now at 20 to 17. Now they're trying to be play the patient game. Vince Williams working the outside. Broken up by the Braves. Well, the, the Tulsa offensive pattern does such a good job of taking away defensive help in that post position. Once again, if that pass wouldn't have been tipped by the front man, they'd have had another easy layup. Open shot from deep in the corner for Boise Winters. Going to get this one, but Webster comes up with the carom and puts it back up in his foul. Well, this is the position that is so hard to defend against the offensive rebound. The shot from the corner and trying to block off the guy on the weak side offensive rebound. Herb Johnson picks up his second foul. That's the third team foul on Tulsa here in the first half. Anthony Webster. 6'7 sophomore from Cairo, Illinois, not far from home. Here's Roosevelt Davidson coming into the game. He's normally a starter for the Bradley Braves. Junior college transfer from Florida. And Johnson, Booker Johnson. <laughs> Sitting down, Dick Versace a little concerned about how the chicken pox would affect no, his legs. No, bad call. <laughs> I don't. Uh, from my angle, it certainly was. And now I think, I think maybe the official just made a mistake. I, I think, think he, he simply pointed. I think he just simply pointed in the wrong direction. It was either a foul or the ball was certainly knocked out of bounds by the Tulsa defender. He meant I, Bradley, but he was pointing in Tulsa's direction. So Bradley retains possession, leading 21 to 17. Eddie Matthews, Webster, Suggs almost got it a steal there. A lot of quickness on that Tulsa club too. Well, in my mind, there's no question that they're, they're, they miss Scott right now in the lineup. They, the offensive patterns just aren't running smoothly. They've had a couple balls uh, knocked away. I think they're leading back in there. And Richardson not happy the way things are going with the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and looking over toward his bench. He may make some more substitutions. Eight minutes, one second. Left to play first half, 21-17, Bradley. I'm Mr. Goodwrench, and I can get your GM car or truck back on the road fast, even if it needs an engine or transmission. Look, a brand new GM Goodwrench replacement engine, not a rebuild. The GM Goodwrench transmission that's reconditioned to tough GM standards. So before you go to the extra time and expense of rebuilding, check out my GM Goodwrench engines and transmissions. Keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. If you own a small business, profits can get squeezed when inventory doesn't match up with production. What can help is a visit to an IBM personal computer dealer. Once you've explained the kind of help you need, a computer expert will show you the system that's right for you, show you how simple it is to get started, and how IBM's easy-to-follow instructions and library of business and management software can help you solve your problems and give you a tool for modern times. The IBM Personal Computer. Not only can it help you plan ahead, it'll balance your books and give you more time to make dough. And the cost? That's the icing on the cake. Your own IBM Personal Computer. Try it at a store near you. Number 24, Ricky Ross of uh, Tulsa has got to be one of the most traveled men in college basketball. He's been at Wichita. He's been at Kansas, right? Yes. He's been uh, at two junior colleges out in California. There's the uh, the road of travel for Ricky Ross in his college career, and he is only a junior. Now you wonder, 
why a coach would want to take a chance on a player like that. But obviously, he's an outstanding basketball player. And they're very impressed with him. In fact, they, they've told me that th there have been times this year when he has passed up uh, uh, taking some shots. You get a reputation when you're traveled like that. They're impressed. They think he's very much a team player. Last year at College of Marin, he was the leading junior college scorer in the country. Matthews tried to penetrate on Herb uh, Sc uh, Suggs, who is a freshman from Kingston, North Carolina. Not surprising that off of a timeout, Tulsa comes out in a different defense. Bradley, of course, had to have set up some type of play. They changed defense, mixed things up a little bit. Matthews didn't take the shot from just inside the three-point line, so they set it up outside again. Four-point lead for the Bradley Braves in this Missouri Valley Conference game. Big game down the road, some 40 miles at normal Illinois tonight. Wichita State taking on Illinois State. Both teams unbeaten in the conference. Matthews missing from 16 feet. And Tulsa played tremendous man-to-man -man defense in that series. They couldn't get the good shot away. And surprisingly, it's been the defense, I guess, that has been the most disappointing thing for Nolan Richardson this season. Little alley-oop underneath to Herb Johnson. Missed it the first time and tried to tip it in the second. And was fouled. I think he's going to get Webster over the back right there. That was now five team fouls on the Bradley Braves. Foul number two on Anthony Webster. And Johnson will go to the line. He's hit three out of three. From yeah. the, no, he won't go to the line. Frank, you know, you want to say that, that Bradley's done a great job on Ross and Harris. They've each only got two baskets. I'm just surprised that the game has been so low scoring up to now. Suggs, the freshman, put up an air ball, but it came right back to him. There's Ross. Johnson. Well, that's three shots at it there. Couldn't get one to go. Uh, I've got to believe that uh, neither team is shooting a high percentage. I don't know if we've got those figures right now. It's certainly fallen off since the opening moments of the game. When this man hit his first couple. Six minutes and 40 seconds left to play. Again, uh, Richardson about to go to his bench. Steele. Harris gets it down to Suggs, and the freshman drives in for the left-handed layup. Well, and I, I think that's got to be it. They've got to bring Scott back in the line. In fact, he's just checked in at the scoreboard. You see him over there right now. So Scott's ready to come in. It looks like Jeff Riley is about to come into the game for Tulsa. 21-19. Braves have been ahead throughout. That's very short. Mines missing from outside. Webster trying to put up the shot, and he walked. Well, coming up tomorrow, a great tennis match. John McEnroe against Yvonne Lennel. They were winners today in the semifinals in the Grand Prix Masters Tennis Tournament. You can see it tomorrow on CBS. McEnroe defeated Guillermo Vila 6-3, 6-3 today. And Lendo upset Jimmy Connors 6-3, 6-1, the number one seed in the tournament. Anytime Yvonne Lendl wins, I don't know if it's much of an upset, is it? <laughs> He's not a bad player. Right? Harris missing from 20 feet. Webster grabs the rebound. Now here's Willie Scott, the man who does such a great job of running the Bradley attack. A real quarterback in this team. They list him at 5'10", but if he's over 5'8", I don't know. And you know, during the NIT, he was so much more active and aggressive offensively. He penetrated, he shot the ball. He hasn't been scoring as much. He's got that ability. Well, you know what Versace told us yesterday? He doesn't have the same people playing with him this year as he did last. He doesn't have Mitchell Anderson, Third Gill, Reese, people like that. Roosevelt Davidson trying to force his way inside, gets called for the offensive foul. Well, I'll be interested to see what happens here. It looks to me like the ball just hits him. No, I guess he did put a shoulder in. Whether or not there was a lot of contact, I'm not sure, but certainly Nelson made a a good play and fall under the floor. One thing you play for Nolan Richardson, you generally get to play. He has just about cleared his bench here in the first half, trying various combinations. Nielsen. And you know, Ricky Nielsen, Ross. other other than the one traveling violation, he's done a decent job of handling the ball. He has indeed. That's what they're really hurting at this year, the point guard position. Nice fake by Ross. Boy, well, they're just it. David, they're just not shooting well. Ross especially. Scott to Mines. Mines trying to go up underneath. Put up the left-handed shot. Doesn't go. Webster with the rebound. He's fouled. <laughs> Mines is down on the floor wondering how in the world could I put that shot up and not have a foul called on the other guy. 3-3, Riley. Foul 
foul is called on Jeff Riley, a 6'9 freshman from Muskogee, Oklahoma. Coming back into the game for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, Steve Ballard, number 35. And on the free throw line is Anthony Webster. Webster, two out of two from the line. And you know, that's, that's their first point in quite a while, too, Frank. They have been rather quiet. You know, I really expected a, a game in the, the high 70s, low 80s. I don't think we're going to get very close to that. Now, there are scores it away. And there's an indication of what's plagued the backcourt for Tulsa uh, this year. A needless turnover. There was not much defensive pressure in that situation. Ross just threw it over Nilsson's head. Four and a half minutes remaining. That was tipped by Ricky Ross into the backcourt, so. Well, well, I thought it, it looks from this angle like it could have been tipped. I wasn't sure. Evidently, the official was sure, and it wasn't. Nick Versace is not so sure. That's Tulsa's seventh uh, turnover. Turnovers are even at seven apiece. Harris, number 20, comes back into the game for the Hurricane. They will stay uh, in this part of the country Monday night play Illinois State. They've got a tough schedule coming up now. Ten games in the next 21 days for Tulsa after having that nine-day off period. Well, they better be well rested. Harris missing. Ross fighting for the rebound, and Scott takes it away from him. And I believe they play seven of those, six, seven of those ball games on the road. Bradley in the front court, 23-19. Winners, yes. Boise winners. The six, seven sophomore from Chicago buries one. And we've got a foul underneath the basket, which means it'll either be a one and one or Bradley will get the ball out of bounds. There's a foul on Johnson underneath the basket while the ball was in the air. The basket will count. Bradley will, will regain possession underneath their offensive basket. That is the third foul on Herbert Johnson of Tulsa. Timeout called with four minutes left to play in the first half, and the Braves off to another surge. Lead the Hurricane 25 to 19. We'll be back in Peoria in just a moment. You know, there's nothing like getting together for a nice, friendly game of cards. Right. Jim brings the cards. Uh-oh. Mickey brings the doll. Ooh. Thanks, doll. <laughs> and I bring the beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you don't want to get filled up when you're dealing with these guys. Mm. Okay, Numa, cut the cards. Mm. Oh, no. Oh. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. <laughs> We are USA One, and number one is taking charge of front-wheel drive with Chevrolet Celebrity, Citation, and Cavalier. With rear wheels removed and snow plows attached, these three different size front-wheel drive Chevrolets are demonstrating traction enough to plow snow. Traction that helped make Chevy number one in front-wheel drive sales. USA One is taking charge. Mr. Post? Need some help? I'm your Bell System Yellow Pages representative, here to help you. I'm in the Yellow Pages. Look at all those trees. Ten acres. We specialize in dwarf fruit trees. Say that in the Yellow Pages, where four out of five people let their fingers do the walking. That is helpful. Hi. This is Mrs. Post. <laughs> I'm interested in all your fruit trees. Oh, you must have a big backyard. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Dwarf fruit trees. Let your fingers do the walking. Dick Versace is one of the great characters in college basketball. I remember you asked him yesterday how he wanted to be remembered after it was all over. What did he say? Well, he said he, he wanted people to ask where he was, and he wanted the answer to be in the south of France, hanging out in a villa or something. I don't understand that, Frank. Maybe you do. I understand. You know, in Versace, you got to understand it. That's the way he thinks. Well, he came into the restaurant last night. I, I thought he had just walked off the Easy Rider uh, <laughs> he did. stage. With his black leather jacket yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. He has stepped on a few toes here in Peoria since he's been here. But winning solves a lot of things, and he is a winner. 
And he's done a great job with this program, and he's got a program. He says, you got to be thinking two years ahead. And he said, two years from now, we will be in the national rankings. Next year, we'll be contending. We would have been this year, except uh, they did lose the two six nine centers. One signed a baseball contract, and the other uh, out with a blood disorder. Well, that was a brick. Boy, oh boy. Tulsa, trying to break. Doesn't work at all. There's a lot of air in that shot, let me tell you. It, I thought that was an important possession. Bradley's on a little bit of a run here. A six-point run in this game is quite a, a big one because the, score, uh, the scoring is so low. 25-19. Bradley leads it with three and a half remaining in the first half. Willie Scott working the outside with Marty Mine. Scott. We told you he had the ability to shoot from the perimeter. That's a big basket. Scott certainly has, has done it all for them in the first half. It'll tie Bradley's biggest lead of the afternoon so far, eight points. So this is the brave second big run they've made. We'll see if Tulsa will come back as they did the first time. Now there's Vince three, Williams. And there's three minutes to play. They've got to get, stay right in it. And that one assures that they will, I would think. Wentz Williams from Kansas City. Gets the two-pointer to make it 27-21. Again, Scott, this time a little bit short. You can see that rim flop around that Steve was talking about earlier. The really loose rims. Ricky Ross threw that one away. That was just a poor decision. If he'd have dribbled the ball down the floor, they'd have had a two-on-one fast break. Certainly, um, Bradley is uh, just about as young as Tulsa. Both these clubs uh, rebuilding, despite the Nolan Richardson's claim that he's simply reloading. They've got talent on these teams. But they're not ready, and they're not going to win the conference this year. But look out a year or two down the road. I would think this is the type of possession where you work until you get a very, very good shot. Boise winners inside the lines. I don't know if I consider that a good shot. Only if it went in. <laughs> Nielsen running the attack to Vince Williams in the high post. Harris. Walk. Nice fake on Mines. He took a little shuffle step right there. Steve Harris gets his third hoop, makes it 27-23. So the pattern has been set. The Braves make a run, and then uh, Tulsa seems to come back. That's been the pattern of this first half so far. Webster, little six-footer, oh, went up and tipped it in. But they're calling offensive goaltending. They're saying he hit it while it was on the cylinder. I think it's a good call, but once again, you see the bouncy rim. That ball was put up so soft in a normal rim, it hit the front and rolled right in. You see right here, that rim gets to bouncing and vibrating. The ball comes right back out. Look at that. Now, is that just the rim, or does a coach get his preference of how he wants his rims at home? Well, does it make I... any difference? Nice pass underneath, and Ballard with a little baby hook from the left side. 27-25, Bradley. We're down to a minute 20. Left to play in the first half. Nolan Richardson getting a little fidgety. On the bench for Tulsa. Yeah, the, the defensive guards in the, brand, in the Tulsa zone have done a great job. They've got their hands up. They've deflected some passes. They're making it tough to get that initial pass to the wing. The place you've got to get it to start your attack against the zone. So Scott took a look at the clock. Exactly one minute left to play. A little under one minute left in the first half. And Bradley leads it by two in a game that's been surprisingly low scoring. Davidson, and they get him on the offensive foul. Roosevelt Davidson, 6'4", junior, a junior college transfer from Ocala, Florida. Takes up his second foul. They've both been offensive fouls. I think if we would get a chance to look at that again, it might be a question of call. I thought the defensive man actually moved in to, to Davidson. Let's see if Tulsa will go for one shot with 45 seconds. Left to play in the half. A bucket ties it here. Neither team has attempted a three-point uh, goal. For those of you interested in how the three-point thing is working, 19 feet, 9 inches. That's a couple of feet outside of the Atlantic Coast Conference, which is the shortest uh, three-point line. 25 seconds. Tulsa looking for the opening, trying to run the clock down, get one shot. That would tie this game going to intermission. And this is the guy they'd probably like to have taken, Ricky Ross, or this man, Steve Harris. 10 seconds. Good defense by Bradley. Nielsen gets it to Ross inside the paint, and it is not go down for him. Alley gave it a shot, and Ross had a good shot. 
I about thought, 12 feet out. And I thought it was real important, Frank, that they did not score right there. You know, a lot of people hit the floor down there. I don't know when the officials are, are making the decision that it's been too much contact and it's, and it's time to whistle a foul. All right, let's look at those last seven seconds again. Well, here's here's what you hope to happen. They get a back cut. Ross beats the defender. Now, this is a great defensive play, avoiding the contact. Now you just see people jumping up and down. I don't believe there's a foul here anywhere. I, I, I thought that, uh, that Tulsa, Bradley was lucky that Tulsa didn't tip it in there. With the score, Bradley 27, Tulsa 25. NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. Bradley by two as the teams are coming back on the court. 27-25 is where it stands. And as far as the first half statistics are concerned, actually they're pretty close. But you get the impression as you look at these stats that if one team really got going, it could blow the other team out. Neither, neither team has really played that well. No, no. And if you'd have, if you'd have told me the score was going to be 27-25 at halftime, I'd expect it maybe to be 27-25 midway through the first half. Uh, I'm just real surprised how low scoring it is. I, I think that the teams are playing very, very good defense. Now Bradley is leading in rebounds, 19 to 14. Yet they're the smaller team. Yeah, and I, you know, Bradley's been out rebounded every single game this year. Tulsa, even with Vanley in the lineup at 6'10", has not been a strong rebounding team. Uh, I don't know if that's a factor. You take a look at the shooting percentages, though. Uh, Bradley's shooting 46. Uh, Tulsa shooting 40 percent. If somebody gets hot, you know, it, this game uh, could be a, a blowout. No one has, uh, has done it. In fact, uh, Barney Mines uh, is the only player in double figures right now. He scored 10 points in the first half. And the other thing that surprised me, if you would have told me that Ross and Steve Harris would have combined for 10 points in the first half of this game and they'd have been within two, uh, I don't think anybody would have believed that. And uh, so they've got to feel good, you know, with Vanley out, uh, being within two at halftime, they've got to feel good. Leading scores in the first half of play, as we mentioned, uh, Barney Mines of Bradley had a total of 10 points, Webster with seven, and then Ballard with six points, and Johnson with a total of five points for Tulsa. Frank, I think it's interesting. There's a minute and a half before the first half, second half tip-off. Bradley has not come out on the floor. I don't think Versace is very happy. I think you can see them come out and play a lot harder. CBS coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. Turn to New Center 31 with Martin Savage and Ann Ferry. By Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. And by IBM. And welcome back to Peoria as you look at Dick Versace He's talking to his club. Now, he kept him in the locker room until 40 seconds were left to play here prior to the start of the second half. They have not warmed up. And is there any question that he let himself, <laughs> let his players know how he felt? I'm sure there isn't. He, I'm sure he gave it to them. I would expect them to come out, play much more aggressive defense, and, and, and play a lot harder this half. Versace in his fifth year with Bradley. And uh, he said to us yesterday, we talked a great deal of time about the fact that his team was snuffed for the NCAA bid last year, despite the fact they won 20 of their last 24 games. They won 10 on the road. And he said he holds no bitterness uh, toward anybody. He thought that they proved something when they won the NIT. And there's Nolan Richardson. Now, his team is 6-5, and five, and Nolan was thinking this morning, he said... I don't think a team of mine has ever been six and five before, and I don't like it. Well, and he's shown, showing a lot of patience with a team that doesn't have a lot of experience and hasn't played together very much. Uh, as you said so often, they're, they're in a rebuilding year. Bradley working the ball on the outside. They have a two-point advantage as we start the second half. Cross court to Davison. Certainly you can lose the ball game during any three or four minute stretch of the 40 minutes. I've always felt that the first four or five minutes of the second half were, were the most important part of the game. Mines getting loose. Backs it off the window for two. Barney Mines with 12 points, the leading scorer in the game. He's averaged 14.9 on the year. So a four-point advantage now for Bradley. Well, he got him off to a fast start at the, at the beginning of the game. It looks like he's still got a hot hand. Harris going into the corner to Ricky Ross, who can't get loose for the shot. Nielsen continues to more or less run the show here, though he hasn't scored. He's done a pretty good job, though not that time. 
right into the hands of Mines, who gets it down to Willie Scott, and Scott rides in. Let's see, did he walk? Yes. Ooh, I've got to see that again. That's a traveling call. No two-pointer. You no, know, he, he, he faked like he was going to put it up with his right hand and then transferred the ball to his left. The only question is, did he take one extra step? Now, let's see. One, two. Boy, oh, boy, that's, that's just not a real good call. Ty Nielsen out front along with Harris. Harris puts it up and hits it for Telsa. Steve Harris, the 6'5 sophomore, gets his fourth basket. Harris really turning into a fine player. And, of course, uh, he is just a sophomore, so he's going to be a star for Nona Richardson for the next couple of years. Scott with the open shot from the corner. A little bit too much. And a rebound to Ricky Ross. Down to Harris. One-on-one -on -one with Scott. And he misses the layup. Webster grabs it for Bradley. Bradley Brave, some great, great college basketball names of the past. Paul Unruh, Gene Melchiori, Chet Walker, Mitchell Anderson have all played here. Some got an injury over in the, on the corner. I think on the last exchange, somebody fell on Mine's ankle. I believe he's got a, a slightly sprained ankle. Of course, Frank, I, I grew up in Cincinnati when, when the Missouri Valley was in Cincinnati, Louisville, Memphis State. So I know the, the, the tradition in this in this league. I think they, they suffer from a little bit of an identity crisis with so many teams in and out of the league over the last six, seven years. Coming into the ball game is Matthews, number 10. Bradley controls. They have a two-point lead at 29-27. Two minutes deep into the second half. Davidson, he looks more like a football tight end than he does a basketball player. Boy, you know, if he had a couple more inches, he would be a real force inside. Winner's a little short. The guy hits the ball every time. Williams, down to Ross, and Ross's pass is tipped away by Willie Scott. Davidson was recruited by Dick Versace down in Florida, and he said he came here without even visiting the school. That uh, Versace has a very elaborate, apparently, uh, visual presentation that he gives his recruits highlight films and what have you really fires them up easy two points oh that's a and that's a great great pass by ross once again with the, the offensive pattern by design takes away that weak side help you get baskets like that vince williams with the bucket and we're tied at 29. sixth time that the game has been tied webster from outside slapped up once no good webster with the next one rams it off the window and it doesn't work and Nielsen comes down with it for Tulsa. Ty Nielsen waiting for the reinforcements. Outside the Ballard was a knee heavily taped. And Nielsen gets his first basket of the game. Boy, boy, and anytime you can get a basket from Nielsen like that, it's nothing but a plus. You just expect him to run the club, not make mistakes. Well, one thing you want to do is try to quiet the crowd down in the road game. And Tulsa has just gone ahead for the very first time, 31 to 29 as Bradley can't buy a basket. And Versace starting to look down his bench for help. Harris, turnaround jumper over Matthews. Stead passes it. Charging foul on Matthews. No, let's see. Yeah. Which way is it going to go? It's going to be a charge. Take a look at that pass a few moments ago by Tulsa, the easy bucket by Williams. Well, it all starts off the pass. Ross uh, flashes post. When they front him, he backdoors, and this is just great awareness, knowing where your people are at. Got the ball from out of bounds, inside for two. They call a foul on Harris. That's his second. So and it's really a call tough. that you very seldom see in college. The offensive man forced the contact. He jumped into the defender, and they made the proper call. So Bradley behind for the very first time of this game. They have won seven of eight games in this building this year. This is the first year here in the new arena after playing many years in the famed Robertson Fieldhouse. Across town, Mines off in the corner to Booker Johnson. Johnson misses, but Webster going high to tap it in. Anthony Webster gets his third basket. I don't know if we can, if we can get a shot of Tony Baroni, the assistant, Versace's assistant, but he's very active on the bench. And they, he really has a lot of input into what happens on the floor. Ross is fouled by Webster. That's three fouls on There's Webster. Tony, there's Baroni. You'll see him throughout the game walking up and down the bench. Versace listens to him. They're, they're, they, they go back to their high school days. As you can see, Versace, a lot of decisions will depend on what Baroni's input. He has a great deal of confidence in him. He told us yesterday he could have had some head coaching jobs and turned him down to stay here. 
Matthew Ross Ross of the free throw line. You guys got one going straight. And that's okay, Leading 32-31. Ricky is from Wichita, Kansas, averaging 18.7 on the year, but he's only scored five points this afternoon. Time out. 15 minutes, 57 seconds left to play in the basketball game here at the Peoria Civic Center. And Tulsa leading Bradley 33-31. Experience. Experience the best-selling two-seat sports car in America. Experience. Experience the performance of the 1983 Mazda RX-7. Experience the stability of anti-sway bars front and rear. Zero to 50 in 6.3 seconds and efficient aerodynamics. RX-7, one of the world's great driving experiences. Experience. And one of the world's great sports car values. The more you look, the more you like the Mazda Experience. Say, Mike. You found them. Do you do tune-ups? All the time, lady. Yes, but can you guarantee your tune-ups for a year with free follow-ups? At Goodyear, when we tune your engine, we back our good work with a 12-month guarantee. A guarantee that's got our good name on it. Now, who else can give you that? A year guarantee on a tune-up? For auto service that's guaranteed, come up to Goodyear. Where are you going? To get a Stroh's. That's about a 200 mile hike through heavy snow. I know. If you think of it, get two. From one beer lover to another Stroh's. The Missouri Valley Conference Championship game is scheduled for Saturday March 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. CBS will bring it to you. We don't know where because it depends on the seedings and who does what. But CBS, of course, is the network of the NCAA championships. And be with us all the way to Albuquerque. That'll be the night of April 4th. Nolan Richardson. Now, Nolan, in his two years prior to this, won 50 ball games at Tulsa. He is the first coach in the history of the NCAA to win 50 games in his first two years on the job. What are you going to do for an encore, Nolan? Boy, I don't know. <laughs> That's the only problem. <laughs> build up uh, people's hopes. It's like the Dallas Cowboys. If they don't go to the Super Bowl every every year, people are disappointed. They're only and there's a lot of disappointed game. Cowboy fans around. There certainly are today. Bradley really needs a basket. They, they look very lackluster right now. Mines has been the best shooter in the game so far. Well, I swear that uh, Ballard got his hand on that for Tulsa. I don't know who they're going to I believe that, that was Winters that was up there. All right, we'll give it to Boise. Which is interesting because, you know, early in the year, he got benched just because of that. He was not going to the boards. He's put him on the bench, had a good talk with him. I'm surprised that he hasn't been a little more aggressive offensively in this game. Inside it comes Ballard with the turnaround. Nice soft touch, and he's fouled. The basket will count. Foul is on Webster. That is three on Webster. We said three a moment ago, but the last foul actually was on Booker Johnson. So three now on Webster. Well, Bowler's probably the most improved player on the toss team this year. He's all around the basket. He's really not going to score anywhere from outside that lane area. But as you can see, he's very strong and confident inside. First trip to the free throw line, Steve Ballard from Muskogee, Oklahoma. 6'8 senior. Tomley drops it through. This is their biggest lead. 36-33. I think the Braves are getting a little restless. Braves need a basket. Winners has his pocket pick. Williams coming over the top to just take it away from him. Here comes Nielsen. Ricky Ross on the outside. Great job of saving it by Webster. Oh, he really gave it an effort. Scott down to Mines. Open shot for 20. Stepped up by Webster. Doesn't go. Next one comes down to Tulsa. Ballard protecting it. You know, generally when your team isn't playing well and not alert, the best way to get them to back into the ball game is to put on some full court pressure, make them start playing defense. Generally when you play good defense, the offense follows. 
Tulsa with a three-point lead, 36 to 33. They have lost the last 10 times. They have been to Peoria. Off balance shot by Harris goes. Well, I thought Harris got away with another walk right there. Thought he changed pivot feet before he put it on the floor, but certainly made a great shot. So a five-point advantage for the Golden Hurricane. Bradley can't find the hoop. Willie Scott taking aim. And second time around, decides to take the shot. Well, it wouldn't surprise me that Scott might be the guy to get him going. 38-35, Tulsa. Harris under pressure from Mines. Gets rid of it to Ricky Ross. Well, in that situation, anytime a player picks the ball up and picks his dribble up like that, you try to overplay everybody who's one pass away. Harris got a nice pick. Look for the good shot. A screen and pocket in the 17-footer. Good job that time by Ballard in setting the screen for him. 12 points for Harris. And again, a five-point Tulsa advantage at 40 to 35. I thought Mines got away with one there, too. Mines putting it up. Tulsa wanted the traveling call, but the foul instead is called on Harris. And that's his third. 12 points and three fouls for Harris. And getting a rest here will be Vince Williams, number 32. I don't, I don't know what went on in halftime in the locker room, uh, but it certainly uh, doesn't look like it woke him up very much. No. Davison comes back in for Bradley. Barney Mines. Bradley has not used full court the entire game. And Versace told me that that's what they were going to start out in, full court pressure, man to man, to try and shake up the backcourt, uh, the Tulsa backcourt people. Let's obviously, see if they go into it. This is the best time to get into it is off of the... Obviously, he was pressure. trying to keep you alert to see if you noticed that they didn't. 14 for Mines. And a three-point game at 40 to 37, Tulsa. Still a long way to go. Turnover. Mines comes up with it. Down to Willie Scott. Scott on the drive. Tries to dish it off. Boise winner's shot hung on the rim but wouldn't fall. And there you see, I'm telling you, that rim has got so much spring in it, you put it on the, on the, on the rim and it's going to bounce right out. Ricky Ross off bounded shot. Blocked on him by Davison. Then Davison throws it away. And Scott picks up probably a very smart foul at that point, pre uh, preventing uh, an easy layup by Ballard. Scott now with three personal fouls. That's the way the scoring has gone in the second half. Tulsa has outscored Bradley by five. Up until this point. Booker Johnson comes in, Davison goes out. And on the free throw line is Steve Ballard with two. Nine points for Steve on four baskets. And he has made his only free throw attempt. You know, it's so important for Bradley to get the crowd back into the game. Off of the off the off the steal and the full court pressure. It was so important Look at this. to score a basket, I believe. They're saying now he was fouled before the shot, so no free throws. Well, I don't know if that was a, the proper call, but it's certainly a big one and a big play by Scott. Ross missing. Well, that worked out great, didn't it? A great defensive play by Scott because he had the easy layup. Things turned out, didn't get a free throw, and they missed the shot. So really no harm done, except Scott did pick up his third foul. Boise winner is going to Booker Johnson. Pull up jumper, yes! Booker Johnson gets his first basket of the game, and Tulsa coming back the other end. Ballard driving in for the shot. Let's see if the bucket will count here as he was fouled by Johnson. No basket. I think they're going to call the, the contact before the shot went up. Now, I believe it's a good call. But how often do you see, see a team make a basket on one end, run back without watching the ball, and they throw it full court and, and get a basket? Let's see right here. All right, there you see the contact right there, well before the shot. Good call. It's certainly the tough call to make in, in college basketball. Substitutions coming in for the Golden Hurricane. Vince Williams, 32, is back in the game. Webster comes out. One point game at 40 to 39, with Tulsa out in front, and it's still 12 minutes remaining. Has Ricky Ross scored this half? For? I don't he's got believe two he points. Has. He's got two points. Four at the half. He's got six now. They have really done an outstanding job on him. In fact, I think they both been from the line. They were the two free throws. Yeah. 
Nielsen working on the outside for Nolan Richardson's Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Open man is Harris. Shot is a little short. And Booker Johnson comes up with it. Bradley is two and three in conference play. And Tulsa one and two. And listen to this crowd now. They're coming alive. Urging Bradley on. Well, they turn it right over again. Boise Winters has it taken away from him by Harris. <laughs> boy, oh boy, that's just a mistake that uh, is hard to explain. Threw it right into the defender's hands. You've got to take one long, giant step and make the defense commit to open up a passing lane. This new arena seats 10,400 compared to 7,300 for old Robertson Fieldhouse. I believe they sold it out in season tickets all but about, I think they keep a couple hundred for the visiting team. Yeah. That's about it. Everything else, season ticket. Bradley basketball is very, very large in this part of Illinois, as you might well expect. Toss is doing a great job here of being patient. They're going to work for a good shot, but they get another turnover. Here's Scott. Big basket. Leading the break. Pine short with the 15-footer. So important for Bradley to, <laughs> to convert one of those turnovers. The crowd just wants to become such a big part of this game, and they, they won't They're make disappointed it. every time. Right. They bring it down, and they miss a shot, and they turn it right back over. Tulsa calling this time out with 10-29 left to play in this Missouri Valley game. Tulsa leading Bradley by one. We'll be back. The bookmakers in Las Vegas didn't have odds on it last night, but there was a fight. <laughs> Yeah, it was over at Horton Fieldhouse, so we'll take a look at it uh, in just a minute because it's turning to be kind of a controversial thing, Martin. First of all, the baseball, the Chicago White Sox won't be getting Rudy May from the Yankees after all. The American League today vetoed the acquisition after finding out the 39-year-old basketball coach Nolan Richardson is threatening a lawsuit. So is ISU center Rick Lamb. After a bench-clearing brawl that ended with the ejection of two players and two technical fouls being whistled on Richardson during last night's ISU game with Tulsa at Horton Fieldhouse. It'll all clear out, folks, I promise you. No one will care about this a week from now. The game started out civilly enough. A 19-8 Tulsa lead. ISU got 10 straight to get back to 19-18. Ricky Johnson made a steal out in front to put Illinois State ahead for good, 22-21. Then, on a loose ball, the fight. Lou Stefanovic in white for Illinois State on the floor. And with the hammer lock for Tulsa is Jeff Rahilly. Look at it again from another angle, if you will. Here it is on the floor. There's the hammer lock on Stefanovic. Now watch the back. Rick Lamb comes up. There's Nolan Richardson right behind. Did they push? Did they not push? That seems to be the controversy going on today. Yeah, we'll take a look at it again here, and we'll show you what we're talking about. Look at the hammer lock on Stefanovic in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Now, Nolan Richardson claims that Rick Lamb came into the fight with intentions of getting into it. Lamb says he didn't. Richardson says he came in to try to be a peacemaker. And we'll show you what happened here in a little bit. No one did not appreciate Rick Lamb. Watch the upper right-hand corner of your screen here. Lamb will come in just in a moment. There he is right there, number 53. Now watch for Nolan Richardson in the polka dot shirt. Here he comes, right there. They are laying hands on each other, as you can see. Was it a push? Was it a fight? Who knows? Things will be resolved, and as we can say here, boys will be boys. Nolan Richardson and Rick Lamb both threaten lawsuits after the game. I don't think anything's going to come out of it, though. The latest high school boys basketball rankings are in for the week, and again, this area is well represented in class. Tulsa leading, but this one a long way from over. Ten minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the game. Uh, something tells me we might see as much action in the last ten minutes at least as we have seen in the first 30. Ball bounced right to Herbert Johnson, and Davidson doing a great job blocking the first one, but he got it back, and Johnson got an easy hoop. You know, the ball was loose was for such a long period of time under the basket. I can't believe that none of the Bradley defenders got back there to help out. Barney Mines working the outside with uh, Willie Scott. Scott driving inside the paint, drops it off to Mines. Underneath, Davidson. First basket of the day for Roosevelt Davidson. Oh, and Scott almost got another, another steal. Davidson's averaged about 11 points per game. That was his first bucket. 
of the afternoon. So we're at one point once again, 42-41, Tulsa leading. Nice pass inside to Ricky Ross, gets an easy layup. Ross now with eight on the afternoon. And again, it's Tulsa by three, and Versace is up off the bench. And motioning to Anthony Webster to get back in the game. Willie Scott. Scott holds the single season Bradley records for assists and steals. Boise Winters misses from outside. Booker Johnson has his shot blocked. Gets it back. Oh, you don't know how close Harris came to stealing that because Johnson never saw it. It worked out well. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> Scott at the top of the circle. Boise Winters taking aim. Johnson. Short from 10 feet trying to follow and he came over somebody's back. Came over Johnson's back, look like. Bradley looks to be on the defensive end, playing as alertly as they have the whole game. However, on the offensive end, it doesn't look like anyone has the confidence to take this shot. It's an interesting stat for you. Of course, Tulsa has substituted a great deal more than Bradley has, too. But nevertheless, Bradley getting uh, no production whatsoever. Off their bench so far this afternoon. 44-41, Tulsa. Harris, oh, a beautiful alley-oop job. Steve Harris now with 14. I think you're going to see a timeout. Dick Versace calls the timeout for the Bradley Braves. Well, Bradley's just making some defensive mistakes that I'm very surprised uh, to see, and certainly Dick Versace isn't very happy about. Here you see, now once again, see, there's no defensive help, although even if they'd have got there, I don't know if there's any defense against this play. It was just a picture-perfect pass, and, and Harris did a great job of, of laying that ball in the basket without putting it uh, on the backboard. He really had a tough angle. Frank, so often it's just as important to put defense on the guy passing the ball as it is to the guy receiving the pass. Nolan Richardson, the head coach of the Tulsa Hurricane, talking to his club during this timeout. They lead by five. CBS coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. This is CBS. You know what? This year I let a computer help me decide on my rootworm control. And you know what it told me? Thymate. Thymate 20 g soil and systemic insecticide. Thymate saves me as much as $3 an acre over other products. And look, it really works. Keeps my corn growing straight and strong. So save money. Get Thymate. It does the job for less. Thymate. It computes. The day comes slowly to God's country. Nature can't be rushed. Brewing a beer nature's way can't be rushed either. It's called croisoning. The most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Which is why only Old Style has such a clean, crisp taste. A taste no other beer can match. Heilman's Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. Slowly and naturally. Coming up tomorrow on CBS Sports, NCAA Basketball, Memphis State, North Carolina State. That is Keith Lee. A really human dynamo, just a sophomore, one of the greatest college players in the game, and going against a very tough North Carolina State team. That should be a great one. I can't wait to see it. Of course, we've seen Memphis State several times uh, last year, and uh, they've got just about everybody back. Four starters back from last year, a very strong contender. They were number one for, I guess, what, four hours two weeks ago, and then went out Boy, and lost their first game of the year. Yeah, they lost at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, a team that started, started four freshmen in that ball game. Of course, I got a couple good freshmen down there themselves, too, Memphis State. Incidentally, we will have that conference tournament championship on CBS, too. That's right. We were uh, in Memphis last year. This year, they're going to play it at Cincinnati. That's right. And it could be Memphis State and Louisville all over again. Bradley with the basketball. And they need to get some offense going. They trail by five, which matches Tulsa's biggest lead. Scott! Oh, yes! The little man, who is not normally a scorer, has come up with a couple of big baskets when they needed them. Certainly, they, somebody needs to get a confident, hot hand offensively, but if they're going to win this game, they're going to win it on the defensive end. That was a three-point play by Scott, the first of the game, which makes this a two-point game at 46-44, and Tulsa turns it over. Now, they turned it over on the five-second call. Now, when the defense forces a five-second call, the arrow does not change. So they get possession, the arrow remains the same. 
Bradley with a chance to tie it here with 7.45 to go. Kicked by Tulsa. It will go out of bounds to Bradley. There's Nielsen, who's done a good job running the Tulsa attack, coming back into the ball game, replacing Chuck North. Bradley needing two to tie here. Boise winners working outside with Willie Scott. You know, Brett, Bradley just throws a lot of dangerous passes. Almost every pass they throw looks to me like it's going to be tipped. Davidson. A lot of crashing underneath. Well, and a foul called on Bradley. Take a look at the three-pointer. Now, the three-point line is the dark line, not the white line. Oh, his foot was on a line. That wasn't a three-pointer, I don't believe. Well, that's where you take off, isn't it? Right, and his foot was on the line. Both feet have to be behind the line if it's going to be a three-point shot. It goes into the books as a three-pointer. Tulsa with a two-point lead, 46-44. And the Hurricane have the basketball. Looking for the good shot here. Now Bradley just can't get anything going. They make one big play, but they can't put anything together. Now look, they've got back-to-back -back turnovers. They've got to convert. Look at this. His right foot from this anger, angle <laughs> appears to be on the line. If, in fact, it was, it should have only been a two-point goal. Look at the arc on that shot. I don't know how he made it. All right, the Bradley Braves again with a chance to tie it at 46. They need a basket. Just under seven minutes left to play in the game now. Mines missing from the corner. Davidson struggling for the rebound underneath. Comes up with it. Gets the shot around. Scores! He was fouled. The basket counts. I think the crowd likes this one. You talk about hard work paying off. Davidson stayed with this forever and ever. That was nothing but old hustle on the part of Roosevelt Davidson. Watch him stay after this one. You talk about determination. Watch Davidson. First of all, he had no business even being in the play. He comes from nowhere to get a hand on the ball. Now watch. I thought it was great that the official could not blow the whistle here because there was no violation. No one had possession. It was a loose ball. Davidson makes a big, big play. And we are tied for the eighth time in this game. Six minutes, 42 seconds. Left to play in the contest. Tulsa 46, Bradley 46. Don't go away. Only one truck can be America's lowest price truck. Saints alive. Saints alive. Saints alive. Saints alive. It's Mazda's B2000 Sundowner, and that $57.95 price includes standard features Datsun and Toyota don't even offer on their economy trucks, like a five-speed, steel-belted radial, tinted glass, full carpeting, and Mazda B2000 Sundowner even gets better gas mileage. Only Mazda's got a truck for just $57.95. Where are you going? To get a Stroh's. That's about a 200 mile hike through heavy snow. I know. If you think of it, get two. From one beer lover to another Stroh's. Here's something that you can only get from Atari. It's not a new video game or a home computer program. It's the Atari Service Program. Only Atari backs up its video games and home computers with a nationwide network of over 1,500 Atari service centers. Look in the yellow pages or call the Atari Helpline. We'll give you service information and answer any kind of question about using your Atari home computer. Atari Service. We answer your call for help. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, the final round of the tournament that has seen the best in the world battle it out. The Grand Prix Masters Tennis Tournament tomorrow on CBS Sports. Take a look at Davidson one more time. You talk about 110% effort. He gave it all on this play, and it's a big bucket. Really got the crowd pumped up. Yeah, it really does. And once again, he comes from nowhere to even get himself into the play. Stays with it. As I said on the way out, I, I thought the officials made a good decision at not blowing the whistle. It was a loose ball, no violation that had occurred. And, of course, now he gets a chance to complete the three-point play and put Bradley back in the lead. Well, and they've got the crowd back into the game. It's so important now to carry the momentum through. They don't seem to be able to make that one big play and, and, and get over the hump. They have, however, tied the score now. 
and they're back into a zone. We've been tied eight times now. The lead has changed hands a total of four times. Six and a half minutes and counting. I think they're going to keep the ball out and make him come out of the zone. Rattling. They've been hurt inside off uh, on the defensive end. Tulsa, for the most part, over the last few minutes, has scored most of their baskets uh, on easy layups, beating that man-to-man, -man. and I think they're going to hold the ball now. This is where the shot clock uh, would come into play if, it, if they used it. They don't have it in this conference. Nielsen on the drive, can't get it to go. And here's the Braves, Willie Scott, the little munchkin, down court, pass deflected. And out of bounds, and last touch by Tulsa. And I, I'm not sure who got his hand on that ball. I think it was Vince Williams. It was Williams. And he made a great play, hustling back on the defensive end. Barney Mines will inbound it as the Braves try to recapture the lead. Tulsa now is back into a man to man, so both teams change defenses off that timeout. Now it's Bradley looking for the good shot. I thought he got fouled. He did. There goes Davidson again. Who did not start this ball game, but has come off the bench and played very, very well. And Davidson will go to the line. Capacity crowd of 10,400 on hand here at the brand spanking new Peoria Civic Center Arena in downtown Peoria, Illinois. And you're wondering what's playing in Peoria? The Bradley Braves are. So Davison puts him back in the lead for the first time since early in the second half when they led it 29-27. Bradley in front, 47-46. Nielsen and Harris now work at the outside. Bradley with the one-point lead, Frank. Now they can stay in the zone. The offense has to force action. These teams met only once last year in that memorable game, last game of the season, the championship at stake. This year they'll play the uh, traditional round robin. Last year they met only once because of Illinois State uh, coming be into the league. It'll be interesting over the last five minutes of the game if anybody shoots the ball other than Ross or Harris. Well, they'll shoot a little bit. <laughs> Herbert Johnson, he'll take that one. And again, Willie Scott got so close to another steal, had it, and it got away. And Tulsa recaptures the lead. Hines has it knocked out of his hands by Harris. Boy, and he really got hacked on the arm and they didn't blow the whistle. Inside the winners, winners is fouled by Vince Williams. Second foul on Williams. That is the fifth team foul on Tulsa. Bradley has already fouled six times. As we go down the stretch here, the, the foul shooting percentages are going to be so important. Both teams over 70% as a team on the season. So that may be uh, what decides this game. Willie Scott on the outside to Mines. Smooth working tandem in the backcourt for the Bradley Braves. They're the mainstays on this team. The two veterans back from the NIT champions last year. Scott was an all NIT performer. Toured Europe with the all NIT team. Mines! Good long range shooter. Barry's one from 20 feet. 16 points. For Mines, 49 48. Bradley. Still four minutes to play. A lot of time. Nolan Richardson's gotten serious now, got his sport coat off. Down to shirt sleeves. In front of the Tulsa bench across the way. Nielsen looking for help. There's the Herbert Johnson. They work it on the outside. Bradley seems to have settled into the zone now. Seems to be more pleased with it, the way it's been working. And I believe they'll match up. I don't think they'll guard Nielsen very tight on the perimeter, but they will Ross. Approaching and Harris. the three-and-a-half-minute mark now. Three-and-a-half minutes left to play in the game. And Bradley with a one-point lead at 49-48. They take a look at the, at the Tulsa defense. I don't think it's any special type. Even, I believe it's just a 2-3 zone, but they're going to match up specifically on Harris and Ross whenever they get the ball on the perimeter. Now, the other night, they did play a triangle and two against Wichita State. I... The ball hasn't moved around enough for me to tell, but I, I believe it's just a 2-3. Steve Harris. Barrels in and out on him. 
And Mines grabs the rebound. He's double teamed and is fouled by Herbert Johnson. Four on Johnson. Richardson encouraging his troops. A little lonely on the road. Certainly you've got to take some chances to win a ball game. However, in a trap situation like that, Mines looking like he wasn't going to do anything. Possibly they, they could have waited for him to make a mistake. How many team fouls is that now? Now uh, you're talking six apiece now. Six apiece. Everybody in the one and one from here on out. I'm out, Bradley. Bradley wants a time. Dick Versace will gather his troops around him. It's a great indication of, of a good offensive scheme when you can score off a timeout. Of the three, three of the four TV timeouts in the first half, Tulsa scored the first basket. Let's see if they can set something up and do the same here. Right, let's see if we can eavesdrop on this uh, Bradley Huddle here with Dick Versace. Obviously, the crowd a little bit too loud at this point. They can play a man to man. And if once they go man, all right, you're running four corners. That's what you're running, okay? Don't forget the blind pigs. Now, if you find yourself in trouble and a pass that you just don't think you can make safely, call timeout, okay? All right? If you see that Anthony or one of your teammates does not have a safe pass, here's got an official call timeout. How many we got left? Three? I think we got three left. Okay. Now, you're in four corners. Don't get sloppy on your uh, on your Yankee when you get it inbound. Anytime it's a man-to-man -man Yankee, you line it up a little further back. Okay, this is the pick, comes, rolls to the ball. Okay, he goes either way, and he comes to the ball. All right, four to now, score. You're running four to score. That's exactly right. All right, now, hey, make your miss. We're back two threes. Right. Don't fall asleep in the two three though. Yes, now you gotta be alert. Sometimes they'll run a guy through, and then they'll wait him right here, and they'll lob to him, like they used to do to Presley. Alert. They have it on either side. All right, you're in four corners. Now be alert here. We've got time. Be alert is what Perse says. Well, and the interesting was it thing. He didn't even he didn't just discuss the offensive end. He also went back and discussed the defensive end. They're going to come out if Tulsa is in a, a zone. They're going to force him to play man to man. When they go to man-to-man, -man, they're going to play four corners to score. They're not going to try to run the clock out. They're looking to penetrate and dish off for the easy basket. On the other end, they're in a 2-3 zone. But remember, you've got to play man-to-man -man principles when a man is in your area. You've got to be just as alert, maybe even more so in a zone when you do man-to-man. -man. Bradley has the lead and the ball. 49-48 with two minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the game. And Barney Mines will inbound it. Scott picked up immediately by Herb Suggs. Suggs, the freshman from North Carolina, has come back into the game. He can uh, he can go quick on quick, so to speak, with Scott perhaps better than anyone else uh, in the Tulsa lineup. Another dangerous pass. Dick Versace. <laughs> no wonder his hair is gray. Mines goes in for the shot. The basket counts. But the foul is called on Mines. Oh, and this is really, really a tough call to make. We'll have to take a look at it. A chance for you to make the call yourself. Now remember, the man has got to be in position when the offensive man leaves the floor. Mines almost lost it right there. Now let's look. Oh, it looks to me like he's still moving after Mines left the floor. In that situation, it would have been a, a foul on the defense. He'd be at the line for three-point play. Both teams in the bonus now the rest of the way. Mines is 18 points. Vince Williams on the line for Tulsa. Makes the front end of the one and one. Sometimes the angle lies. Let's see it, what it looks like from this vantage point. It looks a little bit more like a good call from that angle, doesn't it? Absolutely. Williams makes them both, so all things said and done, we're right back where we were a moment ago. And that is Bradley with a one-point lead with two and a half to go. Scott does a great job of getting it across the center line. Going to Davison. Webster. Back inside to Davidson. Way outside to Mine. Nice they pass. slow it down. Tulsa doing the real smart thing. As soon as Scott gives it up, as soon as Scott gives it up, they overplay him so he can't get it back. Foul is on Harris, and that's four on the Tulsa guy. Dick Versace. You know, when they play down at Tulsa, all the students come out in the Dick Versace fright wig. 
<laughs> you know, he had some problems down there a couple of years ago, went up in the stands. Yeah, he decided to be a fan for a while, he went did. up into the stands. And, uh, <laughs> timeout. Timeout, Tulsa. Tulsa will call this timeout with two minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the game. And it's a tight one here in Peoria with the Bradley Braves leading Tulsa 51 to 50. It's a funny feeling when you're 17, just finished school, and times are lean, don't have a job, don't know what to do, never learned a skill, and you want to work too. Well, you know the services have the means to teach someone who's still in his teens. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, they'll take you, train you, show you the way. You'll work hard, get decent pay in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Serving your country's a real good start, helping pay for colleges and services part. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Future in doubt, shed that lead. Join the services and get ahead in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. Bitigo Creek, Louisiana, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Bitigo Creek means bass, fat and tasty. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and the smooth golden light taste of old Milwaukee light. Old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. Let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. These Mercedes-Benz automobiles have been on the road only since 1971, far too young to be considered classics. Yet their resale value already is classic, because each one of these six Mercedes models, built more than a decade ago, is actually worth more money today than the day it was new. Mercedes-Benz, value that endures. Nolan Richardson, the head coach at Tulsa, great athlete in his day. He played his college basketball at Texas El Paso, then played a year in the National Football League as a defensive back with San Diego, and also played a year in pro basketball with the old ABA Dallas Chaparrales. He's Barney been there, had go to the line. What'd you say? He's been there. Yeah, he has indeed. Let's set it up for you once again. Two minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Bradley leading by one, and on the free throw line, is Barney Mines, who's a 76% free throw shooter on the year. And you gotta believe Bradley's gonna break the free throw line in the last two minutes, 15 seconds. Herbert Johnson comes into the game replacing Ballard. Mines now has 19 points and is the leading scorer in the game. Not be made. Ballard came in for Johnson. Johnson's gonna have to go back in until this, time. Ellie, th this is, this is real good now. Ballard came in. Just before the, the, the timeout on a dead ball situation, and they tried to substitute for him before play resumed, and, and you're not allowed to do that. So Bradley has a three-point lead now at 53 to 50, Mines with 20. And of course, Bradley doesn't want to foul. They don't want to give up a three-point play, not the three-point shot from outside the arc, but they don't want to foul and have somebody make a basket and go to the free throw line. Two minutes left to play in the game. Ricky Ross on the outside for the Tulsa Hurricane. The Suggs, just a freshman. Kingston, North Carolina. The Steve it, Harris, he's their great shooter. And it's so important for Tulsa not to panic and make sure they get a good shot. Suggs missed the six-footer. The lane opened up to him, but he took it off balance. And Al Bradley will try to hang on. Oh, they walk. Willie Scott walked. Lost control of the ball, and that is a big, big turnover. That'll Boy, make your you, hair gray and uh, make it look like that, indeed. If, if you don't expect that from Willie Scott, and if those things make your hair turn gray, then Dick Versace has had a lot of players make those kind of plays. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be much grayer or whiter. Ross on the outside. Tulsa down by three. Ty Nielsen. Ricky Ross has a three-point try that failed. Bradley down quickly. Boise Winters versus Asa saying, slow it down, guys. You're going to give you a heart attack. Double team. And a foul called on Johnson. That's five on Herbert Johnson. So he will leave the premises. Richardson can't believe the call. And again, they fouled Mines, a 76% free throw shooter who has been only perfect from the line with four out of four. I, I would bet that you just jinxed, 
jinxed him, Frank. You think so? <laughs> Never fails, does it? Nope. First, there's the indicator. Next tie ball situation would go to Tulsa. And that could be a factor. 53-50. Richardson took a long time before deciding on his substitute. Finally came back in with uh, Ballard. That's the time remaining, a minute 17. Bradley with a three-point advantage. And a chance to add to it here with Bonnie Mines on the line. Frank, I'm even a little nervous. This is the first close game you and I have had in a year and a half. That's true. We went through the entire season last year without getting a game that went down to the wire. Our closest, I believe, was eight or nine. That's right. We followed Georgetown through the tournament. That didn't get close until they, they got to New Orleans. They were blowing everybody out of sight. That's four straight free throws for Mines, and now puts Bradley up by five. And now the three-point play comes into bold. Ross is looking for it. Nielsen out to Ross inside the three-point line. Webster rebounds for Bradley. And things will start to look good for the Braves. This is five seconds. Davison, I would think, is the fellow you would want to uh, foul in this situation. Willie Scott putting on a show here, and Harris just hooked his arm. This might be two. He just reached out and grabbed. No, one and one. From the reaction of the Bradley coaches, apparently they're not going to give him two. It'll be a bonus situation, one and one. You want to make an attempt to go for the ball so that they will call one and one. And one. If you foul without any attempt to steal the ball, it's supposed to be a two-shot intentional foul. Tulsa will call time. Keep in mind, we do have the three-point play in the Missouri Valley Conference, and Richardson has got to be telling his guys to start firing the three-pointers. I don't believe they have any choice now. They've got to put up the three-pointer. I don't know if they had to the last two times, although they did. And you know Bradley now will keep a close check on Harris and Ross from the three-point range. It might not be such a bad idea to take the quick inside uh, basket for two points on the other end if he should miss this one and one That would get you within three, and then one basket would tie it up for you. I'd hate to be in a position of having to try to do it. Don't forget tomorrow on CBS, more NCAA college basketball. The Memphis State Tigers against the North Carolina State Wolfpack. If memory serves me correctly, that counts as a uh, Metro Conference game for Memphis because uh, of the way their schedule is set up this year. Each of the teams, as I recall, plays an out-of-conference game, just uh, as I think that a ball game counted last week for uh, Louisville. Use your well, those like decisions. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> That's less than Dick Versace. He's getting Wherever pumped up the ball now. Is, they're going to run three guys at the ball. When that happens, I want the opposite guy, one of you guys, or both of you, I want you coming up here so he has somebody to throw the ball to in there. Okay? Then you can back cut like Beat that. The pass run run your pick. You. Hey, when you come up here, run your pick right away. Next time up. Boy. No foul. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Hey, 47 seconds to go. What's he telling us? Well, don't foul on defensive end. That's primarily what they're talking about, what to do on a defensive end. They're going to be fouled every time they get the ball offensively. They've done a great job. Each of the last two times down the floor, they've only allowed Tulsa one shot at the basket. They've done a great job on the boards. We're talking about rebounding and not fouling. Willie Scott is a 76-point free throw shooter, as is his teammate, Barney Mines. And the free throws have certainly made the difference down the stretch. Mines hitting four in a row, and Scott hitting that one. To make it a six-point lead, and that makes it seven. What do we say about a close game? <laughs> the home court advantage paying off there. Easy bucket there, but they more or less let Tulsa get in for the two-pointer is Steve Ballard. And immediately, Ross fouls Mines. Well, see, there was the point I made. You got to believe they're going to prevent the three-point goal, so they went inside for a quick two. Now you got to just hope that they don't make the free throws. 
student uh, body is back in force here in Peoria for the first time since the Christmas holidays. And add a lot of enthusiasm to a uh, already enthusiastic crowd. Mines on the free throw line. The problem with Tulsa is they've been fouling the best free throw shooters here the last couple of minutes. There aren't many bad ones. He is seven out of seven from the line, including five here in the last two minutes. And, and he's looking like the MVP, Frank. But Bradley has done a good job of keeping the ball in the hands of the good free throw shooters, too. If Davison gets it, you've got to foul Davison in my mind. I don't think there's any question we're going to have to award our Chevrolet MVP to Barney Mines of the Bradley Blades. Seven-point lead. Shot missed by Harris. Scott comes down with the rebound. Three Tulsa players chasing him. And the foul is finally called on Ross. Versace is loving it now. That's more like it. I'm still surprised that this game is as low scoring as it is. Uh, I, I can't believe it. I'm glad we didn't get into that off the top of the show because I just said it was going to be high scoring. <laughs> 20 seconds left. 59, 52, Bradley. Braves led by two at halftime. Then Tulsa took the play away from them early in the, in the uh, second half and ran up five-point advantages on three different occasions. And then Bradley came back. Scott on the line. Boy, well, they have made their free throws. Scott has played such an important role in this game. He's really controlled the tempo. That's eight straight free throws now for Bradley down the stretch. Nine. Makes it a 61-52 game with less than 20 seconds. Ross fouled out of a three-point try is good by Steve Harris. And Tulsa not giving up yet. They call a timeout. So Harris gets the three-pointer, which gives him 17 points. Timeout. And we'll be back in Peoria in just a moment. If you compare all the new cars for low financing and 550 protection, you'll find Ford doesn't give you both. GM doesn't. Toyota. Dotson and Honda don't. Only Chrysler Corporation gives you both. 11.9 financing on every new 82 and 83 car. Dodge truck, every import. And five-year, 50,000-mile protection on every new American-built car. Compare. For low financing and long 550 protection for your investment, you'll come to your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealer. People usually think of IBM before Burroughs. After all, they're bigger. I was with IBM for 14 years. And bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. Take small business computers. The Burroughs B20 has more memory, power, and growth potential than IBM's Data Master. And our hotlines will also answer your questions instantly. So when it comes to IBM and Burroughs, believe me, the question isn't who's bigger, it's who's better. One more set, guys? Nah, you guys are just too tough today. For uh, Michelob Light? <laughs> you should have quit while you were ahead. Michelob Light for the win. Would good friends play this hard for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Michelob Light for the winners. I don't get it. You guys killed us. <laughs> don't blame us. You suggested we play for a Michelob Light. Michelob Light. Our Chevrolet player of the game, Barney Mines of the Bradley Braves. 24 points for Barney, including six big free throws down the stretch. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to be shared equally by the general scholarship funds of both schools to assist students in all academic fields. And now remember, there's going to be a lot of... A lot more big free throws, I believe, in this game. There's 14 seconds left. With the three-point goal, there are only two, tells us only two baskets down. Now, they're going to try to force a five-second call, prevent them from getting the ball in. If they get it, I would expect them to foul immediately. Six-point lead, and immediately they drew a charge. Foul. Look at that. Boise Winters was trying to break open and plowed into one of the uh, Tulsa players who was down on the floor right now. See who that is? Is that Suggs? Can't see his number. Well, he got hit in the face somewhere. I, I heard his head hit the floor. He really got run over. So official timeout called with the injury to the Tulsa player. 
And Nolan Richardson already looking to his bench is going to put uh, Jeff Riley into the game. It is uh, Suggs, the freshman guard, the executive producer of NCAA basketball on CBS, Kevin O'Malley. Our producer, and again, we wish happy birthday to Rick Las Vita. I can't remember what it was like to be 31. Our director is John McDonough. And good to have John aboard once again. And the deuce, Phil Brown, our associate producer. And the rest of the folks, including our old friend Lance Burrow, helping us with the telecast at the Peoria Civic Arena. First time uh, in Peoria, and I'm impressed by this building. It's a nice one, isn't it? Yes. Beautiful basketball palace. Not only used for basketball, but uh, hockey as well. And uh, all kinds of other things. All right, Suggs appears to be all right. And, uh, of course, uh, if he can't take the free throws, Jeff Riley, who came in for him, I guess will shoot him. No, I don't want to tee here now. No, Jeff I Riley, a 6'9 freshman from Muskogee, Oklahoma, had foot surgery in the offseason. They didn't know how much help they'd get out of Jeff this year, but he's working in very nicely. It's a dead ball foul, so they'll shoot it. That's his first point of the game. Makes it a five-point lead, 61-56. Boy, they're, they're creeping up again. I'm telling you. Oh, this may not be over. There's still 14 seconds left. Get a steal and a three-point play. And good job by Riley on the two free throws. Lots of pressure. Mines trying to get up court and is immediately fouled. Barney Mines will have a chance to add to that 24-point total. And his perfect mark of eight out of eight from the free throw line. Now remember, there's 12 seconds to play. Again, it's uh, the a four-point spread. The Bradley bench is protesting here. They they wanted an intentional foul. If he should miss here, they <laughs> they are definitely within reach of this game. He doesn't miss. Nine for nine from the line for Barney Lines. 25 points for Barney. Five-point lead with 12 seconds to go. Mines might be the coolest player I, I've seen he this year. He hit the rim on a free throw all day. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Three-point try by Harris fails. Bradley comes down with the rebound, and the foul is on Vince Williams for coming around. And again, they indicate one and one, and Versace can't believe it. He said, what do you have to do to get an intentional foul here? I think you have to complain. <laughs> you know, you, know, you got to bait the official a little bit, hoping to, at some point in time, get a two-shot foul. But I think they've made all, I think the officials have made all the right calls down the stretch here. All right, it'll be Winters this time on the free throw line. Boise Winters, outstanding shooter from uh, Chicago. Just a sophomore. I think free throws are Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you take a look at the ball game. I don't care what's happened the first uh, uh, 39 minutes, the last minute of the ball game has been free throw shooting, been the key. They have not missed a free throw. I've lost count now. I think it's 11 in a row coming down the stretch. Three point five at the buzzer. Basket counts on the tip in, but it will not make any difference in the score as Bradley beats Tulsa 65 to 59. Frank, you know, so often games come down to the last few seconds and it's free throw shooting. They made 10, but 12 straight free throws. Barney Mines just had a great game, was cool, calm, collected down the stretch. Big win for Bradley. It was a close game until they started shooting the free throws and that's exactly how Bradley pulled away to win it. So the Bradley Braves uh, win it in the conference now. Bradley coming up with a very, very big victory. They needed it rather badly. They're now three and three in the conference, eight and seven on the year. Tulsa six and six on the year and one and three in the conference. Frank Lever for Steve Grody saying so long. Be sure to be with us tomorrow. It starts with college basketball as Memphis State goes up against.